Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Entrepreneur India's Resilience Series. During this tough period, while investors have become more observant about the ongoing trends, founders have looked for ways to increase their cash runway. While some truncated their expenses, others pivoted their businesses to keep the cash flow and uh, earn investors' confidence during the pandemic. These unprecedented times, despite its cruel nature, has made the bond between investors and founders stronger, or so, so would we believe. So today we are going to talk about just that. Uh, I'm Saurav Kumar, editor of Special Projects Entrepreneur India, the moderator for the session. I'll quickly lay down the ground rule for our attendees. The discussion will go on for 30 minutes, followed by a 15-minute Q&A session. If you have any questions during the course of the discussion, you can post them through the Q&A uh, or comment option. Uh, mention in your question if it's directed towards any specific panelist, and we'll take them up post the discussion. Uh, let me now introduce our panelists for the day. We have with us today Mr. T.C. Minakshi Shundaram, Founder and Managing Director of Chirate Ventures, India Advisors. Uh, Mr. Rishav Sangvi, Co-Founder and CTO, Relofi. Mr. Praveen Agarwal, Co-Founder and CEO, Better Place. Uh, welcome, everyone. So, you know, to start with TCM, I'll come to you first. In a nutshell, in a nutshell if you can please tell us that how I think the last... I was calling me abhi, abhi thodi der pehle, par, uh, I was on a call with Entrepreneur India because ah, TCM ah, link for me aay the or wo attendee ah, No, no, I am there. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, we'll just continue. So, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so TCM, I'll just come to you, uh, you know, uh, so in a nutshell, if you can please tell us that how has been the last six odd months as an investor? You know, there have been studies that more than 50% of the startups will close down, etc. So uh, what was going through your mind as an investor? What were the emotions, uh, the, you know, the ups and downs, if you can just briefly tell us? You know, uh, in interesting question. Um, to look back, I think the first uh, four to eight weeks was a time of focusing on saying that how to extend the runway for the companies which are burning capital, right? Um, and that was the most important thing. And uh, entrepreneurs are obviously by DNA optimistic, right? And so to that extent, they, and they were people who drive uh, at 320 kilometers, right? So 200 miles per hour. Uh, and that's why they are growing as fast compared to when the economy was growing much, much slower. So it took, I think, one or two weeks for them to realize saying that this is actually here for longer impact, right? Uh, COVID has changed. Initially, I think they were saying that, okay, I will run faster. I'll continue to run faster. And that is at a time when uh, what I would say is the rest of the world had stopped and going in reverse, right? That, that means, you know, the effort that is involved to do that, and that was not even necessary. So once they realized it, I think um, saying that this is here for long, I think pretty much everyone moved into, you know, uh, managing the burn. And um, it was an intense period between, I think, um, investors and entrepreneurs. It was brutal on them, I should say. And I, I remember, it's easy, right? We can be a lot more objective because we are not in the firing line, right? In terms of going out and telling employees, saying that, look, we cannot continue, right? Or uh, saying what, I'm going through those. So it's not the easiest of things, but it was like, I can tell you saying that this is like um, learning by, uh, the fire, right? Uh, it, they went through the firewall. But the good thing is, um, once that got over, and we are tech VC, so to that extent, one of the important things all entrepreneurs realized is that tech is actually a COVID, uh, COVID is actually a tech uh, tailwind event for the tech companies. So that has actually helped them start thinking about how they can move things more and more online, uh, launch new products, uh, new offerings, uh, new channels, uh, which is phenomenal actually. So after the first six, eight weeks of looking at the burn, um, 
reducing it, which was brutal, their optimism came back and then started saying that, okay, now how do we grow? And I can, I can tell you saying that our portfolio, which in March had a $1 billion uh, revenue run rate collectively, uh, by September is already back at and above. Uh, several of them actually are significantly higher than pre-COVID peaks. Um, is at and above billion dollar run rate, so which is phenomenal. Yeah. And this is yeah. at a time when we are talking about economy having contracted 24% in the June quarter, and and then even in September quarter it will be closer to 10%, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is the resilience of the startup uh, entrepreneurs and, and management teams. Right, right, absolutely. And this has been, uh, you know, shown by many entrepreneurs in the way they reacted to the opportunity, uh, changed their businesses. So, you know, I'll come to two entrepreneurs that we have here and who were at the receiving end, uh, you know, when this all started. So, you know, uh, Praveen, I'll come to you first. You know, uh, TCM very well uh, uh, put it that, that, you know, they're back to where they were pre-COVID almost and things like that. So, what was your, uh, uh, you know, conversations with the investors, you know, when they, all this started? Uh, but what was the conversation around? Was it, uh, was it like uh, uh, that, you know, boss do something, change the things, or was it okay, calm down, let's take, let's take a step back and think about how we are going to go from here? Yeah, it's, it's, first, first, of all, first of all, this was perhaps the best experience that one can live with, right? I mean, uh, from, from a journey perspective, the kind of learnings that we got, we will never get perhaps, and hopefully we will never get it. Uh, but if, if you look at uh, in the mid-March, uh, one of our invest, investors, Will Pooley, is based out of uh, US. He started asking me, uh, what are your plans for next 18 months and COVID is coming and we were in denial mode. Like TCM said that Ye to aega or jayega, uh, why should you worry so much? And so many things happened in past like dengue and SARS and other things, uh, don't worry about it. But every day it was changing. And when the 25th of March came, the world was already upside down uh, with the lockdown in the picture and uh, business going down dramatically. Uh, some parts of the business went down by almost 80% uh, all of a sudden. Uh, we had to rethink, right? The good thing that happened um, that we have only one view. The investors have multiple views, right? They talk to uh, 15, 20, 100 of their portfolio companies. They understand not only what's happening in India, but also in US and in China and other things. So we started doing a weekly meeting almost uh, as, as a board and with investors and trying to figure out what are they learning from others and what are the things that we should do, right? And the first request was that, okay, let's see that we have a run rate for next 18 months at least. Assuming that our revenue goes down to zero, right? Even if we have a revenue that only helps us to increase the run rate, but let's assume that the, run rate, the revenue is zero and then what would be the run rate? So we started preparing ourselves for the next 18 months uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way where there is a zero uh, revenue. Now, the good thing is that the investor said, don't worry much whether whatever we have planned for this financial year, if it's delayed by a year, it's delayed by a year. But if we are there and if we learn from the situation, we will bounce back again. Right? And so that's the situation we were with. So we started cutting down costs uh, and we also got a lot of help from the investors. Again, as I said, that they have a, uh, multiple views, which helps us to learn from others. They also started collecting data from different uh, portfolio companies, saying what are they doing, uh, what are the different initiatives which are being run, and then we learn from each other. For example, we just uh, left one office because uh, anyway, we're not going to work from office for a long time. So we said, uh, let's leave this office and we will save on rent and other things, right? So there are all those smaller things, bigger things that we started putting together. And then in, in the month of uh, uh, late May, early June, we started seeing the positive trend for ourselves, right? And we went back to the investors and said, okay, let's, we ha do have a run rate for 18 months, but this is the time to grow, right? This is not time to sit back and wait for things to happen, but 
this is the time to make things happen, right? And I have to put my acceleration in place. I have to go from gear two to three to four to five. And this is perhaps the time to raise capital as well for the growth, right? Uh, there were some uh, discussions whether this is the right time to do it or what happens if we fall flat. But I think everybody started backing, seeing the results. So the questions were also very helpful so that you don't make a decision like TCM said, uh, we are optimistic people, right? But optimism to some extent is good in difficult times. We have to be even more careful. So investors uh, and all of, all, all of our investors, they started asking those difficult questions, which was actually helping in streamlining the process better, right? Uh, today, I'm proud to say that we are far better uh, than the pre-COVID levels. We are at least 50% uh, higher than that. Uh, second is uh, we have raised capital uh, because new investors also see that there is a potential to grow, right? Because if you can show growth in this time, then there is definitely potential to keep growing in the future. So overall, if I see, I think uh, uh, the investors work more like partners in this game rather than seeing a, a, a VC who has given money and looking for a return uh, by hook or by crook. I think that was a very positive uh, thing for us uh, and our experience. And I assume that most of the uh, portfolio so, companies. So no numbers were required to be a reject or anything? No, we had to. We had done a projection in the January uh, with the growth numbers. And in, in mid-March, I said that I will stay with these numbers. But my investors kept asking me that I should reduce it, take first quarter off uh, the hook completely, and then bring it down to 50% or 40%. Because the, And then I said that, OK, COVID is coming, and it will go off by this thing. There was still uh, views that it, it's a cycle. It will keep coming and going. There'll be waves. So you should be a little bit more pessimist rather than optimistic. I think we wanted to have more. The investors kept pushing us. So, so, so which, were, which was the target that you achieved? The one that you thought you would do or the one that investors asked you to do? We are in between right now. <laughs> okay, all right. Rishabh, I'll come to you. Rishabh, what was, what was your conversation with TCM during this period? What was TCM telling you? So uh, for us, I mean, it really depends on the market that you're in, right? So uh, for the transportation and travel space, uh, COVID led to a high period of uncertainty, both in terms of short-term impact on business and long-term impact on the micro environment uh, in which we are building, right? And uh, we had to take some difficult decisions uh, over the next few quarters, how to tactically execute and strategically how to plan for the next one to three years. Uh, and luckily, we have great investors like TCM on board who guided us through this, right? Uh, uh, there was no panic uh, at all created because they understood the market and the macro very well. Uh, we thought through uh, the tactical steps to increase the runway and conserve cash uh, at this moment, which is very important uh, for our market. And second, uh, they, uh, TCM helped us think through our short term as well as long term strategies. Uh, again, in uh, space like transportation and travel, uh, it's difficult to predict how long the long term consequences of this will be right so we also uh, in the board developed a plan b in case uh, there is a prolonged disruption in the market uh, beyond what uh, any of us could imagine right so uh, it was a great uh, exercise in the boardroom where we got uh, you know our short term tactical as well as strategic uh, and plan b in place uh, with the guidance of tcm and just a story on tcm uh, at the risk of sounding corny uh, it was the investor equivalent of love at first sight for us with tcm right because uh, in our first meeting uh, we got to know that tcm has been a train traveler for 30 years and uh, we knew it'd be the right partner because uh, he just got it right like he he knew the real consumer problem so uh, we're lucky to have investors who understand uh, the market and uh, the founders uh, empathize with the founders at this stage so, so as I was mentioning, you know, that a lot of landlords, you know, they kept calling their uh, uh, tenants and said that up job chala gaya or, hey, you know, there is a, so we'll cut down your rent. So did you get any such, uh, uh, such comfort from your investors? So for us, uh, as I said, uh, because of the uncertainty, uh, we had to take decisions to extend our runway. Uh, we did extend our runway and of course, investors, uh, in terms of our projections of revenue growth, everybody understood, right, that 
uh, although we saw green shoots of recovery, nobody knew it's going to be a V-shaped or a U-shaped recovery. So because of that understanding, uh, you know, the projections in terms of revenues and other uh, growth metrics, uh, obviously, uh, even the marketing expense, obviously, we went into <laughs> Board, right, uh, and uh, I think it was clear that until you see a sustained, uh, you know, uh, return to something close to normal, uh, it, it doesn't make sense to kind of uh, kick on with uh, growth at this stage. So we spent the time uh, doing like other things in terms of uh, building products which were there further in our pipeline to kind of expand our market size uh, and a lot of other productive things uh, instead of like growth for us. And and uh, now I, I remember a conversation uh, in the call. So obviously, it it was a no brainer saying that don't spend on marketing, right? That's that was very easy. I think where we and and they were sitting on pretty much all the money that we gave them. They, so they didn't have a huge run, uh, you know, uh, burn at at that point in time. So I think what we challenge them is look, you are dependent on travel, uh, so. Two things we asked was um, one to say that look you had a, a progressive rollout plan. Can you use this time to be ready to go national in one shot? And and you needed actually a lot of this is AI, which means more and more data is important, but data is not available. So in the in the limited data that you have. How can you go national whenever the markets open up? So literally now they are ready and um, I can say they are ready that what they would have taken, let's say 12 months plus to be national. Now they are ready whenever the markets open up on travel side to actually go national on day one, right? So that is something that they use the time. So that is what we were able to use the time and challenge and then save, find innovative solutions on the product front. The, se the second was um, more interestingly saying that, look, suppose this is going to continue, what is your plan B in terms of which other, so you are basically a driven company. So where can this skill be used? Right, uh, in any other market, do you want to look at that? Okay. So was this evident uh, across uh, all companies or like obviously you talked about Relify, but there could be, why I'm asking this to you TCN is because you know towards the beginning we were hearing a lot of stories that you know investors were not uh, honoring the term sheets and also was that sector specific or uh, was it a knee jerk reaction at the initial phase and then they realized that okay it can be salvaged so what was it going on? A couple of things, uh, I think from an industry perspective, now we did actually have an industry group which was exchanging notes and then you know, as to how to guide entrepreneurs, uh, the ACT which was uh, done by all the VCs together with some PEs also joining. Um, we put out some of the guidelines in terms of even how to manage cost reduction, um, you know, uh, different ideas. And at that time, you, if you know, NDMA had issued a notification, so you can't actually let go anybody, right? Um, without getting notices. Uh, so those are all the challenges, right? Um, but one of the, I think there was a, a there was a lot of, I would say, half-baked information which got interpreted differently. Um, you know that typically of the startups, only about 10, 15 percent or 20 percent are funded by VCs, right? Uh, there are many which are self-funded. There are many which are angel-funded, you know, friends and family-funded. They do not have that much wherewithal and run ability to continue giving money more. Right. So when, when a lot of newspaper reports came saying that, you know, 75% of the companies will die from a quantity perspective, is it true? Potentially. Right. But are they VC funded ones or are they self family fund, family friends funded, angel funded ones was not identified. So everybody said that 75% of companies will die. Right. Definitely COVID has played a role in in 
some companies deciding not to pursue, not to continue, right? Because they don't have the runway. Most VC funded companies, because I also spoken to others in the uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, most VC funded companies found ways to extend runway to 12 months and beyond. There are many which are 18 and 24 months also. So I don't think they were at the risk of suddenly falling off the cliff. Obviously, some of them were affected much more, where revenues possibly straight went to zero and things like that. In some of those cases, possibly they had to manage costs better um, or sometimes they got merged into others. Um, but what is very important in every company, we have had to have this discussion. It, it is, see, many of the entrepreneurs who are in the 20s and 30s have not seen a downturn really. Even global financial places, our startup ecosystem, which is like 15 years old, uh, has not seen many of them, right? Um, so to that extent, they have not gone through this to take the tough decisions. And also for entrepreneurs, it is a very lonely journey, right? You can't even share this with family. You can't share this with your management team in terms of all the risks. And so we had to give them a lot of like, as a sounding board, um, also giving confidence saying that, look, we have seen multiple downturns. We have seen how, you know, what is the playbook in terms of how to handle it. And sometimes you need to do things in the larger good uh, where some people get, affected, right? And give them that confidence saying that do it like a karma yogi and not like saying that, look, you, are, you have done something wrong, right? Uh, and I should say the man management teams also uh, stepped up. There are a few companies in our portfolio where there was zero attrition, but 100% of the organization went through cost reduction. Uh, everybody, uh, anywhere from 20% to 50, 75% cost cut, a salary cut was taken by people voluntarily, right? So I think everybody stepped up, uh, hats off to them. And, uh, you know, that is why they could remain as a cohesive unit and then, you know, come back and take the market when markets are opening up now. Oh, okay. So we will come to you. You are, a, you are an entrepreneur. You're also an investor. Or the, you know, so you have both the sides. So, you know, what what did you read of the situation when these kind of news were coming in? As TCM explained that, you know, it was not the VC backed really ones. It was, you know, funded by maybe, uh, you know, Angel Family Friends, which was kind of, so what was your reading of the situation? So I think, uh, I think TCM has already spoken about most part of it. But if you, if you look at the first priority was uh, at least the company, sales through the situation and sales through basically means that you at least have a visibility of 12 to 18 months right and then we will see what happens and the second thing is that now that your business in the current form shape might not be running so what are the other monetization opportunity or other ways of keep doing something which will add value at a later stage right so giving you an example of one of the companies uh, where uh, I have made initial investments is Confirm Ticket, which is similar to what Rishabh does, Redo Fire. Uh, at at Confirm Ticket, we said, okay, uh, the trains are uh, closed like uh, Rishabh already explained. Uh, there's no revenue coming, it's completely shut, but there is a lot of data. Now, what are the things that we can do with this data and work with companies that might need to acquire these users and see if there is a partnership that we can develop and make some kind of strategy around it, right? So that you are not sitting idle and waiting for things to happen. It was all about making things happen, right? And every day is about making perhaps uh, more trial and errors rather than uh, waiting, right? So I always tell my team that taking no risk is the biggest risk, right? I mean, uh, if you take risk, you might fail. If you don't take risk, you will definitely fail. So here we started thinking about different things. Same with Better Place. Uh, we learned a lot of things. Uh, we started working on new products, new solutions. We never thought uh, that some of the solutions that we have done in last six months, we would have done if not pandemic. Uh, and those are actually becoming uh, uh, or being adopted more than some of other solutions that we have. Right? 
सो इट्स अ टाइम टू ऑल्सो लर्न इट्स नॉट टाइम टू से दैट अब हो गया है तो आप क्या करेंगे आप वेट करो आई थिंक दैट्स द रॉन्ग एटीट्यूड एंड आई एम श्योर दैट नन ऑफ द एंटरप्रेन्योर्स नन ऑफ द वीसीज गो इन दैट पाथ सेकंडली यू सेड दैट आई हैव सीन माय सम ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स हु हैड स्टार्टेड सम बिजनेसेस वेदर दिस इज ब्रिक एंड मोटर और सम ऑफ द न्यू टेक साइड ऑफ द इन्वेस्टमेंट व्हेन दे हैड जस्ट स्टार्टेड एंड फॉर देम दिस वाज अ बिगर चैलेंज बिकॉज़ दे डोंट सी क्लियर होराइजन इन टर्म्स ऑफ व्हेन दे वुड बी एबल टू मेक मनी how long it is sustainable the people that they have they cannot pay their salaries they have their own commitments so this becomes a very difficult journey for them so either they pivot or they go back to what they were doing previously right so there we have seen uh, otherwise in my circle i have not seen any uh, uh, big negative impact where they had to shut down one of the areas that we have felt uh, there is definitely some impact is the fintech side especially in the lending business they had to stop the business because you don't know the npa situation and you have to pivot then figure out the right way of doing it uh, in fact we are in discussion with uh, some of them how can we partner and create a distribution channel for larger audience but it's uh, something that we have to learn uh, uh, yeah i mean that's basically what i would like to add okay all right so before i go to the next question i'll again request our attendees if there are questions keep them coming we'll take them another 5 10 minutes maybe so risha i'll come to you so uh, uh, you know uh, uh, pravin just talked about pivot and utilizing the downtime to you know think of what data can be done so you know obviously th- that time you had the comfort of your investor telling you that okay ka, you know take a step back think about it uh, but then as in, in you know you you always at the back of your mind it is there that you know you have someone's money obviously you are sitting on that money now i know that but you know obviously you have someone's money and you are answerable to that so what kind of you know what were what were the thoughts that you in 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 your within your organization were you thinking that why oh, might i should change my strategy or should i pivot or should i look for uh, other avenues so i think uh, what uh, tcm alluded to earlier is that we are very early in our journey right and uh, we were sitting on most of the cash we raised uh, anyway so for us uh, you know uh, the burn rate was anyway very low so that pressure wasn't uh, there uh, for us it was more about uh, i mean firstly uh, just on a separate note uh, the first thought that came in our mind was is a humanitarian uh, crisis right that the first few weeks uh, we thought of it that way and it was crucial to focus on the health and safety of our employees that was the first thing that we did before any of these other thoughts came in our head so in that line like there were no layoffs uh, at relo fi uh, we started doing drills before the lockdown we were well prepared on the it process and communications front right so uh, we also assisted some of our team members uh, medically in the pandemic but coming back to your point uh, there was uh, really uh, no panic uh, in our minds because uh, for us we were very early on in our journey and we were sitting on most of the uh, capital as such uh, we just wanted to use the time more productively and with our team we wanted to make sure that uh, one uh, the efficiency doesn't go down uh, when work from home uh, and everybody knows it's bound i mean it can happen if you don't have the right set of uh, team members or the right culturally the right hires right and uh second was that the communication the coordination with the team is good uh so if we just put that in place and uh, uh we of course uh, came up with a plan b in case this is longer or uh, we had uh, you know discussions on extending runway and uh, cash but uh, yeah i don't think uh, we really panicked at that stage okay all right tcm i'll come to you know how did the investors reacted to pivots i know i i i'm a lot of companies did pivots but that was not the original plan for a lot of them but they did to survive the period so how were investors looking at it yeah so you know uh, in our portfolio no, nobody did a pivot but they added uh, extra lines so there's a company which is in the b2b um, you know in the packaging solutions and they looked at the opportunity of all medical supplies that are required pp uh, requirements so they actually started an additional line on pp which this year is likely to be 150 to 200 crores of business for them right uh, so that was opportunistically they were able to jump into it because their core competency was able to 
find suppliers, qualify them, and uh, also find buyers, right? Um, and then so create a marketplace for them. Um, I think, um, but lately we are looking at companies which raised seed and then said that they pivoted. And uh, I think the important question there that I try to get into uh, is that obviously, you know, pivoting is a very pragmatic approach. There's no question about it, but also try to understand what went, what was going in their mind in terms of making the pivot and why they felt that the previous thought process, uh, eventually, you know, pandemic will go, if not in six months, maybe nine months or 12 months. So what made them to make a pivot, which is completely abandon the previous one and do something completely new, right? Um, that is more assessment of the team than assessment of the previous idea, right? Uh, for me, right? Uh, to understand that. Um, but, you know, pandemic did not even, you know, this is one stage, but actually there is a lot more that happened because of the pandemic, right? Supply chains got disrupted significantly. So in some of our companies, which had, let's say, things coming from China, we got an inkling about this problem much earlier because, you know, they were, uh, China was shut down for holiday season for their Chinese New Year. After that, supplies did not start immediately. So in February, we started looking at some of the companies saying that, look, how much inventory you have, if you continue to grow, then how are you going to manage this? Those were actually and how to build resilience in the supply chain side, which many people did not think, you know, everybody, including you know, most of US companies, were dependent on single source suppliers and single country and, and, and then when things could not move and they, nothing came in as a supply, right? So how to create second lines? Uh, what is the additional cost that you are willing to bear, right? Because when, when China was the cheapest in most cases. Um, but, you know, how do you go to a Taiwan or, uh, or Thailand or Vietnam to create supplies or find Indian suppliers? Right. Uh, to some extent, Atman Nirbar, uh, part of it also started coming in. People started finding out in suppliers, and you know, there is certain additional cost associated uh, because of scale. Benefits are not available to Indian suppliers. Uh, so those are some of the things which are uh, you know, big learnings for companies. Now, I think most of the companies will not be dependent on a single vendor or a single country. Mm. Okay. So before we start taking some questions that we have, Praveen, I'll come to you. And you know, if I have to ask you one anecdote that you know you heard about an investor uh, uh, and uh, you know founder, uh, where it seems like you know there was some love loss, but the confidence is back. Is there anything very interesting, something that you came across during this uh, past four, five, six months, whatever? Uh, from a point of view of that, you know, any interesting any. Any, you know, any interesting anecdote, uh, anecdote, you know, if you want to share before we go to uh, the take up questions. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight is I was speaking to a friend of mine who is also a big time investor, he was a professor uh, Stanford earlier. And he told me, Praveen, if in this time, if your models are right, your business model, if model is right, then products will uh, join the journey. So focus on the model, not on the products. The companies that focus too much on the product uh, and whenever there were ups and downs, they kind of failed. So if you look at the journey of companies who have survived over the last two, three uh, uh, downturns in the economy are the companies who had the right models in place. I think that was a very interesting insight uh, and when I look back now, uh, what we started doing is our model, we started correcting. We said one of the things that we will work is how to make employers uh, more successful or be more efficient with their resources. That is our business model. So the whole idea turned from saying I have a solution A or module B or module C. It is about ensuring that 
they have an efficient uh, workforce management, right? Now, when we started thinking that way, we started creating new solutions, new ideas. Like TCA mentioned about uh, the company started doing supplies, the medical supplies, perhaps that was part of the model, not a product focus, right? Otherwise you start developing many features in the product, but that does not fit into the model that you want to solve, right? I think that was a very interesting uh, insight that we got uh, during this time. And, and perhaps uh, uh, not only in pandemic, but in any case, this is a learning that everybody should apply in their journey of uh, creating uh, big businesses is what I strongly believe now. Yes, very interesting, very interesting. So, you know, we have just a few minutes left. So we have some questions and I'll, we'll take a couple of them. So uh, this one for you, TCM, uh, you know, uh, uh, so uh, of late we have seen uh, a lot of non-Chinese foreign investments coming in. So, uh, uh, so uh, what, what so, you know, basically, I think what the person wants to ask is that a lot of non early right now, the Chinese investment obviously is not allowed. So uh, is the non uh, non Chinese foreign investment taking their place or will they be able to uh, fill that gap that we were expecting uh, to be filled by Indian uh, uh, investors? Uh, I doubt it, um, you know, not in the short term to short term. Uh, no, nobody knows about the medium term. Um, but uh, the reason is simple, right? Ch Chinese strategic investors um, and some uh, PE investors were willing to write much larger checks. And uh, so companies in Series C or Plus, uh, which would have been easily able to raise money with, with investors, strategic investors, uh, like a Tencent or an Alibaba um, or a Fosun, um, no, they possibly, their uh, potential definitely got affected. Uh, there are others who are now stepping in, obviously from Western Hemisphere, but that would have actually added to uh, this. So now it is only replacing it with more and more Western Hemisphere investors looking at Indian market. What's a natural progression with us having 500 million internet users potentially going to 1 billion in the next five, seven years um, is a natural progression that would have anyway come in, right? But a big chunk has gone away, but that is something that companies have to start uh, adjusting uh, their expectation. But it has a very uh, positive side effects also. When, you know, capital is available in a very unlimited way, uh, the rationality in business goes away. Right, uh, it's a question of how long you can discount, how can you, how long you can continue to cut each other's leg, and uh, you you can now hear both. I'm just taking one category example where both are very well funded, both are unicorns, uh, like as Zomato and Swiggy in the food delivery side. Both of them are talking about unit economics, right? Uh, which they never bothered about before uh, the pandemic because capital was always available. So that's a positive side effect, I would say, that people are looking at unit economics, building sustainable and profitable businesses, right? Uh, that's a good thing. Um, but also, India can absorb a lot of capital. So to that extent, there is an, uh, some sort of negative impact. So, so but as an investor, I'm not complaining because valuations are not going up insanely. <laughs> yes. So what you mean is that instead of uh, irrational capital, whatever foreign funds that are coming in is actually coming in very rational doses and which is keeping the sanity of the markets intact. I, I won't call it only irrational capital. If it is available in an unlimited way, it drives entrepreneurs to grow, to justify the type of money, use of money and the valuation that is given. Correct? Hmm. Now when that itself is, uh, then there is more question in terms of, saying, okay, I need to manage with less capital. That drives a lot of discipline. Okay, okay, all right. fair enough. Uh, there's another question for the entrepreneurs here is that, uh, uh, mm, what will be your suggestion to those entrepreneurs who are eyeing to raise, raise funds but fail because of pandemic? What according to you should be done 
to win investors' confidence, Praveen Rishabh. I can I can share my um, my experience in the last six months where we raised and we just made the announcement of our raise with Jungle Ventures. I think the focus shall be on creating a business and 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 not on capital. You are you are not raising capital to survive the business. You are raising capital because there is a sustainable business that you are already running. And if you can give confidence to your investors that that at this stage, I'm not talking about a run rate of uh, 12 months to 24 months and hence I look for a capital. I am raising capital because there is a clear opportunity. I have a running business, this is sustainable. And this additional capital will help me to expand it 2x, 3x, 10x or whatever it is. I think that has to be absolutely clear in my mind as an entrepreneur and my communication to the potential investors. If those two things are clear, I think, uh, uh, it should be an easy game. Perhaps TCM can add something on that because he keeps uh, sitting on the other side. So you go ahead, Rishabh. After that, I will tell. Yeah. Rishabh. So Praveen's uh, point, it really depends on the market that you are in, right? If your market has stabilized, like uh, it is with EdTech, FoodTech, gaming or something, uh, then there is enough funding already happening. I mean, I just read in September, uh, there was funding of over 550 million happened in India, right? Uh, but I'm assuming the question is from someone who's, there's still uncertainties in the market. So at that time, the only thing you can do, as Praveen rightly said, is run, I mean, become a better run company, right? And focus on stretching your runway. Uh, focus has to be on unit economics, freezing capex or unnecessary head out, head count and like uh, cutting the general administrative fat. Uh, and another thing I would advise is uh, don't uh, fixate too much on valuations, right? At this situation, uh, give discount to valuations because 10-20% uh, more of zero is still zero. So, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think uh, from, from, from an investor perspective who is an existing investor in a company, we have always advised companies take money and worry less about valuation. Right. Um, so, because I think anybody who survives through this difficult period and comes out standing at the end of this will have success written all over them. We have seen tech bust exactly the same thing happened. 80, 90 percent companies vanished. Those who survived actually went on to become, you know, big companies. Um, and multiple times we have seen it. So that is one advice we tell the entrepreneur: don't worry too much about. Uh, this thing. Second thing, when we are looking at new investments, obviously many of the VCs in India have got a lot of dry powder, right? Uh, we have raised funds in the last two years time. And so we are continuing to actively look at companies. And uh, one of the important things we look at is unit economics. And then, you know, uh, how efficiently they can grow. Uh, not just how fast they can grow. Uh, I think Capital efficiency is coming back in the uh, criteria. Also, because like I cannot say whether a lot more capital will be available in the next few rounds, right? Like you know, doing a 50 million, 100 million, 200 million round may take longer. Uh, so to that extent, they have to plan for being uh, capital efficient. Okay, all right. So, you know, we have run out of time, but uh, just before we sign out, you know, very quickly, Praveen, uh, Rishabh and TCM all together. So is the confidence back in the market uh, between the founders and investors for our listeners uh, who are here? So, you know, so they take away uh, that is the confidence back if they have an idea which they have been working on and, uh, you know, uh, they think it will work, uh, you know, is this the time when they can uh, unleash their ideas and start uh, uh, working towards, uh, you know, go ahead if they had stopped at all. Praveen. So my, my take would be uh, that there is never a good or a bad time for an idea. An idea can always work, right? And it depends on the situation, depends on the opportunity. And, and sometimes the bad times actually throw more opportunities than less. Uh, so there are new ways of doing things that perhaps people never thought of in past, right? And this is the time to make use of that 
uh, either the companies who are doing it just keep growing on that spare or look left and right and add more or a new situation that might pop up and just take the advantage and uh, take it forward. And if there are good ideas, I'm sure like, uh, uh, like Chirate, there is dry powder all across the uh, investor circle and people would be willing to fund this. And if you open newspaper, at least I see some company or the other getting uh, some investment uh, every now and then. So it is just that you have to create the right opportunity. Right. Yes. I think the check sizes have, <laughs> as said, the check sizes have become smaller, but funding is happening in various, uh, and I, earlier it was maybe restricted to ed tech, which was seeing a lot of uh, movement, but I now I see that it's across, uh, uh, across sectors as well. So, uh, you know, thank you, gentlemen. And we have run out of time, so my team is asking me to sign out. So thank you so much. And as I see that, you know, the bonhomie is still there and the confidence is there. And as Praveen also said, uh, Rishab said that, you know, they have all, already reached, their, almost reached the pre peak, peak level. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, things are looking up. And despite the 24% uh, contraction, uh, we're hopeful that, you know, India has shown resilience and the startup ecosystem has as well. So we will be resilient and we'll come out of this one. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye. Nice Thank talking you. to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.